Welcome back to the men's top eight professional tennis players in the world. We just had the ATP Tour Finals Championships where they get the top eight seeded players and they square off. We just had the women's where uh, Iga Swiatek ended up beating Jessica Pagula for the WTA uh, Finals. And now for the men, so let's go through the top eight players in the world. So at number eight, uh, Holger Rune. And I don't know a lot about Rune. And um, I have seen him play a couple times, not live, but um, I've seen him play on TV. Uh, he's only 20 years old and he's from uh, Jim Tof Jen Tofte, uh, Denmark. Um, He's been to the quarterfinals already three times, uh, 2002 and 2023 French Open. And then in Wimbledon, um, 2023 here in this past year, this in this year, he was the quarterfinal, um, which means he made it to the top eight. So not bad for a 20 year old player. Um, he's definitely a rising star and part of the young generation of ATP players aiming to be number one. Um, Rune possesses an all-court game. He can hit hard from the baseline, but also change the pace and follow his big serve in and play at the net. So he's pretty well-rounded. Uh, besides his game, he is known for his, his fist pumps on the court. Uh, number seven uh, ranking on the ATP men's side is Alexander Zverev. Zverev. Uh, he's 26 now. And he's from Hamburg, Germany. And he's been to the finals of the U.S. Open in 2020. He's also been a semifinalist at the French three times. 2021, 22, and 23. And he's been um, to the semifinals of the Australian Open in 2020. So Zevrev has a lot of talent. Um, I've seen him live at Indian Wells. He's a pretty smooth character. Um, got to see him on the back courts, on the practice courts. Greatest thing about going to Indian Wells and Palm Springs, that tournament, it's the men and the women. And they have practice courts that you can go and watch uh, some of the best players in the world practice and you can sit um, when they you know, have an open court where uh, some are on the back courts where you can only watch from the stands, but some you can literally be in the front row and watch them, watch them practice. It's amazing. And we watched Zavrev hit, I don't know, 200 backhands, and it was, it was quite impressive. So Alexander's game is you know, characterized by several strength. He's got a real powerful serve. Uh, solid ground strokes. That one-handed backhand is impressive. And he has strong defensive skills, too. And he's actually won the ATP Finals twice. Um, number six, Stefanos Tsitsipas, who is now 25. And he's Greek. He's from Athens, Greece, like his compatriot, um, Maria Sakari. Sakari. Uh, they're both from uh, Greece. Um, Tsitsipas has made it to the finals before in the majors. He, in 2021, the French Open. Um, he's also was a finalist uh, at the Australian Open in this past year. Uh, he's an interesting guy. He's an artist. He's a painter. He's, it comes through on the court. You know, he loves music. Um, He's, he's got, he uses that part of his, of his brain. Um, you know, I don't know how to play any musical skills. Um, I not, can't paint for the life of me. And so Sitsipis, you know, he's got that part of his brain dialed in and he uses that on the court. He's, he's very creative and inquisitive and he's, he's an artist on the court. Um, he has even composed and published some of his own songs. You know, he needs this balance as it helps him and his tennis game. So Sitsipas sits at number six in 
the world on the men's tennis side. Number five, Andre Rublev. He is 26. Uh, he's from Moscow, Russia. He's been to the quarterfinal nine times. So, yeah, that you know, that's pretty impressive, you know. But he hasn't been able to push past the quarterfinals. He's never made it to the semis. Once again, the quarterfinals is the top eight uh, at a tournament. So he um, has never made it past the top eight in any tournament. And he's comes in at number five in the world. Um, so he's a pretty consistent, but he's pretty much lumped between fifth and eighth best. You, know, you can you know pen, pencil him in every tournament. He's going to be in the top eight, and he's usually not going to make it to the top four. Um, but he certainly has the ability to do that, and you know he's in his prime right now, and he's got a few more years to be in his prime. So I think eventually he will make it into the top four into a tournament and make it to the semifinals. Um, he's an aggressive baseline hitter who tries to dominate the game with his favorite shot, which is his forehand. He's got a pretty wicked forehand. The Russian is also known for his emotional outbursts on the court uh, during matches. If you ever watched him play, he's pretty fiery, which he admits that he must improve if he wants to take that jump to the next level and start making some semifinals appearances. Uh, if he ever wants to win a Grand Slam, he's really going to have to get that in order. You know, we saw Nick Kyrgios uh, when he was playing, and it was to Djokovic at uh, Wimbledon when he made it all the way to the finals. Uh, I think that was, was that uh, this year. Might have been this year. Might have been 2022. I can't remember now. But Kyrgios also, you know, can be a, a hothead, crazy person on the court. So, so fun to watch. Um, but, you know, we watched him in that finals against to Djokovic and and he played well. And there were a couple of moments where, you know, a call didn't go his way or he made a shot he should have made. And normally he'd be looking at his box and yelling at everyone's in his box, his girlfriend, whatnot. And, you know, I've seen him play live against a doll where he just completely lost his mind and was swearing at the crowd and yelled at Ben Stiller at, in Indian Wells. And, um, but Kyrgios, he stayed calm and, um, ended up playing pretty well. I think he got a set in that match. Might have made it to five sets. I don't remember exactly, but he, he wasn't the crazy person. He knew he had to rein it in, and, and he did it, and that was awesome to see. Uh, Rublev uh, needs to prove that he can do, do the same if he wants to make the jump and try to get to a finals or a semifinals or actually win one of the majors. Um, okay, now to the top four. One of my newest favorite young players on the tour Yannick Sinner man this guy has got it all um, he's from San Candito Italy Italian he has he's only 22 years old um, he's already made it to the semifinals of Wimbledon in 2023 and he's been at the quarterfinals three times and that's pretty impressive so he's never made it to a final yet I think that's coming but he has made it to a semifinal once and three quarterfinals. He's been in the top eight of one of the major tournaments three times. Uh, for me, it seems like only a matter of time until this guy, Sinner, uh, wins a Grand Slam and makes that next leap. You know, I feel he has number one potential, um, especially when Djokovic retires. Um, which is not going to be too far off. I mean, you saw Nadal's body give out. Djokovic is playing this game as hard as he can for 20 plus years and just takes a toll on your body. And I'm not sure how, I mean, Djokovic is, Djokovic played center in the ATP finals and um, ended up beating center. So center uh, played well. But uh, Djokovic got him in this one. Um, he did get, Sinner did get his revenge against Djokovic today, actually, at the Davis Cup. And uh, Djokovic had three match points on him. And Sinner fended all three of them off and actually came back and won that match in three sets. 
Could have went down in two, but uh, came back and fought off three match points and beat Djokovic to get his revenge from his loss at the ATP Tour Finals uh, to Djokovic. So, you know, the, the new rivalry that I think is happening in men's tennis is going to be a fun one to watch for years to come, just like it was Nadal against Djokovic and Nadal against Federer and Federer against Djokovic, the big three, just battling each other. It's just been so amazing to watch over the past 20 plus years. But I think it's Sinner and Alcaraz. And I forgot which tournament it was when Sinner played Alcaraz. But uh, they played so hard. Both of them got hurt. And Alcaraz ended up cramping. I think Sinner beat him. But they both were just playing as hard as they possibly could. And they both ended up getting hurt. And it, the first set was some of the hardest hitting, most incredible tennis I've ever seen in my life. And that's saying a lot because I've seen a lot of Nadal and a lot of Djokovic and a lot of Federer and um, just incredible. These these two guys are are primed for a, a, a really good rivalry coming up. Uh, okay, number three, Daniil Medvedev. And Medvedev is, man, is he a tough customer. He's 27 now, Moscow, Russia. He did win the Grand Slam, his only Grand Slam, in 2021 at the U.S. Open. Um, he's been to the finals two times at the Australian Open, 2021 and 2022. And he's been at the semifinals uh, at Wimbledon. Um, so he's already won one. He's been to three finals, won one. But in the semifinals once at Wimbledon this year, this past, this in 2023. You know, right now it's November 25th, 2023. And Wimbledon was uh, back in July. And he went to the quarterfinals in the French uh, in 2021. So he was the top eight at the French. So, you know, Medvedev has 20 career titles. And interestingly, they have come at, at all different tournaments. He's never won the same tournament twice, but he's won at 20 different places. It's, that's incredible. Uh, it just shows how well-rounded he is. You know, he's a threat on every uh, surface. Um, and every event, you can never count him. He's always got a chance to be right there at the end, as he has proved time and time again. Um, that match in the U.S. Open when, uh, you know, we, we thought it was going to be Djokovic and Alcarez, and Medvedev said no. And Medvedev beat Alcarez pretty, it was four sets, but he beat him, beat him handily. Uh, I've seen Alcarez lose like that uh, since he's been on the tour. Um, so in 2022 in February, Medvedev was ranked number one in the world. So he has that potential. Uh, his height plays, um, an indispensable role in his obviously immaculate serving. He has the physique that makes him 6'6", you know, an efficient mover on the court and his ability at the end of his range to his opponents must have to, they have to play every shot. Um, even when deep behind the baseline, he has earned him, you know, plenty of wins uh, from the baseline, even when he's deep and knocking his opponents into making errors. All right, so number two, Carlos Alcarez, the 20-year-old from El Palomar, Spain. And he's the new Spanish up-and-comer. That is going to slide right into Nadal's spot. Um, you know, Rafi is going to come back and he's going to play in 2024. And that is the most exciting news that we could all imagine for. What a great player and person he is, Nadal. And to have Carlos be his countryman and be coming up the ranks and already number two in the world um, is quite impressive. He already has two Grand Slam titles. Alcaraz won the U.S. Open in 2022. And he won Wimbledon in 2023. Um, he has dominated at times and has come onto the tour fast and furious. Um, his talent is is undeniable. Um, the tennis world, you know, who wants the big free three to some of them want them to fade into the background and get some of these new up and comers uh, may have found the guy to take over the reins of men's professional tennis for years to come, and he's only in his 
you know, when he's 20 years old. So his 20s are looking great. You know, his shot making ability are unmatched. He can run down almost every shot, making it difficult for his opponents to win at times. And just when you think the point is over, Alcaraz will miraculously get the ball back. And not even only that, he'll get into a difficult position and sometimes even win the point when there's no, you had no chance thinking that he would even, you know, continue playing the point. He gets it back and wins it. And he plays with such joy and jubilance. And he's a showman, and that gets the crowd excited and pumped up, and I dig it. Um, it seems that there isn't a shot that he can't make, including his deadly drop shots and his delicate touch. So, number one, and the winner of the ATP Men's uh, Championship at age 36 from Belgrade, Serbia, Novak Djokovic. And what can you say about this guy? Well, you can say a lot. He has done it all, starting with 24 Grand Slam Majors Finals Championships. Two more than Rafael Nadal, who has 22, and four more than Roger Federer, who has 20. Uh, he, will mic he will most likely go down as the greatest men's tennis player of all time, if he isn't known for that already. Not only has he won 24 Grand Slam titles, he's also lost another 12. So he's been to 36, and he's won two out of three. That is just unbelievable over, you know, a 20-plus year career. So he has been in the majors yeah, 36 times. You know, it's almost hard to believe. Um, you know, Novak is known for having the two, two uh, handed, the best two-handed backhand on the tour. Um, might even be the best backhand ever, um, even amongst the one-handers. I, it's hard. To, I would almost say he's got the best two-hander, and Federer and Warinka battle for who has the best one-handed backhand. Um, and of course, they're both. Uh, from the same country. Um, but what really separates um, Novak from the pack is his return of service. But the main thing is, is his mind when he points to his head, his mental strength and ultra competitiveness. Those two things combined with his skill make him the best player that the game's ever seen. Um, Federer, you know, was definitely the best at one point. Um, Nadal was definitely the best at one point. And Djokovic is, might be the best right now. Um, all those three have some sort of claim to the, the best that have ever played. And Novak, with his mental strength, once you get him to a point that uh, he actually has to win this point, He's done it before, and he doesn't tense up. I mean, every once in a while you'll see it. He's human, but for the most part, when the younger players are playing against him, they know that his mental strength, that he is just, he's going to win that point more often than not. So sometimes he can be unliked um, by his anger and antics on the court, but he is a great ambassador for the game of tennis and for the sport in every match that he plays. Uh, sometimes he'll break a racket and do something weird or say something awful on the court. But when he's answering questions at the end of his matches and the interviews with the mic in his hand, he is elegant in how he speaks. His vocabulary, his English vocabulary is, is wonderful. And he's really worked on that, you can tell. And he always has such great things to say about his opponents and the game of tennis, um, regardless of how he acts on the court. And that's his competitiveness, just going too far and, and taking him to a dark place that he doesn't really want to go. But that's also what makes him so special as a tennis player. So Novak at number one still at the age of 36. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next video, I will go through my top five favorite tennis players of all time. So thanks for watching, and once again, don't be average, be a tennis savage. And you've got to have the mental capacity, and that way you'll have tennis tenacity. Thanks for watching.